Well, I'll tell you what, Mike, uh, here we are. We got such a beautiful day. We're starting out here first thing in the morning. And, uh, you know, we're going after brown trout again. And, you know, you wouldn't say that this is going to be one of those great days based on the conditions that we have. But, you know, we got cold water. Um, it's the springtime of the year, early March still, and it's brown trout time. I'll tell you what, it uh, doesn't feel like it, to be honest with you. I mean, it's time of the year. It's just a beautiful day. I mean, it's warm. We're going to have record highs today from what they're saying or near it at least and you know it just shows you that like we always say conditions okay not perfect you know these wouldn't be what we would draw up if we were after brown trout and we could pick our day but like you said we can, we always say we can't catch fish if you're sitting at home so we're gonna get them out and give it a try this morning and you know you got to make a few adjustments I mean we got bright got bright skies clear water quiet water so we're gonna have to spread baits out we're gonna have to run baits long leads behind boards if possible reduce any spook factor we can get and you know we'll put some fish in the boat you know it's quite a bit different than the other day we're out fishing on the lake in the, you know different scenario dirty water we're kind of keen in on dirty water those fish out on the lake you know what's always interesting about the spot we're fishing today on the bay side is that these fish are different fish they look different uh, you know they still fight good but just the, the quality of the fish on the yeah. bay seems to be a they seem to be good bigger and better fish. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't know what it is about it, but like when you, from a visual standpoint, they look different, like we said. They fight a little different. Um, and to me, your chance of getting a bigger fish on average on the bay side are actually a little better than the lake. Not that there's not huge fish on the lake. We know that we've caught them. But if you're looking at a fish by fish comparison of size, it seems like the fish we pull on the bay are always a little bit bigger. And it just kind of makes it fun. And, and the nice thing about the bay, as we've said a million times, is they're, it's accessible to everybody, small boats, big boats, it really doesn't matter. I mean, if you've got a boat and you've got some trolling combos set up, you can come out here and take advantage of this fishery. Well, you know, we got a beautiful day. Uh, the weather's good, and actually the weather for the rest of the week looks pretty good. So, hey, let's get back to work here and let's see if we can put some fish in the boat. Let's go get them. All right, we got a nice fish on here right away this morning. Good way to start the day. As you can see, these aren't necessarily, what a lot of people would consider prime brown trout conditions. We got fairly clear skies, basically flat conditions. Um, but it just goes to show you, if you put yourself in the right spots, get set up right and catch brown trout in just about any condition. Doesn't always have to be that overcast, choppy day that a lot of people, a lot of people relate to brown trout fishing, especially in shallow water conditions. Um, like we've talked about many times, when you get these kind of conditions, you just got to spread the boards out a little further away from the boat, um, adjust your lead length a little bit, and uh, try to reduce that spook factor a little. But it can definitely be done. Oh, that's a dandy. That's a nice brown right there. That's the kind of fish we're looking for out here. Tell you what, it just goes to show you. You can catch these fish under any conditions. If you get the right spreads, make a few adjustments. There's a nice Sturgeon Bay brown trout right there. Just a beautiful fish. Clean, healthy. I'll tell you what. Get out here in the mornings, no matter what the conditions are, make your adjustments, get your boards away from the boat, you can catch these nice fish yourself. Well, I'll tell you what, when you're trolling the areas we're trolling today, you know, we're fishing for brown trout, but in this early season, you never really know until you get the fish in. And, you know, to be honest with you, don't really know what we got here. This could be a big pike, could be a big brown. We haven't seen the fish yet, but whatever it is, it's really fighting pretty hard. Pretty exciting. We got a great day out here right now. 
conditions are, you know, kind of ideal. We got a little chop on the water. And, uh, you know, unlike the other day when we're out fishing on the lake in the dirty water here, we're fishing crystal clear water. So, you know, you really got to uh, put things in your advantage. You know, we're running our boards really, really far out, more so than we normally would. Uh, and this little chop on the water really seems to help us uh, with getting some bites. You know, it's the second bite already in a short period of time. And I'm really excited to kind of just see what this fish is because it's really pulling hard. And as I said, you never know. It could even be a big walleye this time of the year. You don't know. Oh, that's another nice brown, Mike. Real, real good. Nice job. Yeah, that's a dandy there. Oh, boy, I'll tell you what. This is what you come out of. for some more. <laughs> Look at the size of this dandy. It's just a beautiful fish, and you know, uh, look at how small the head is, but the size of the body, just a gorgeous looking fish. So let's take a look now at some of the brown trout baits that we'll be using. As you notice on the right hand side here we have some of the Yozuri line, the top four being some of my favorite Yozuri patterns and colors for this time of the year. Brown trout notoriously are shallow, a shallow water fish, especially during the low light periods of the day and towards dark. Um, these top sets of baits work excellent in those conditions. Shallow running, good flash, light vibration, really triggers fish. Uh, then we have a standard even Rapala down on the bottom. Excellent multi-purpose bait. That perch pattern has been an excellent color for us here on the bay the last few seasons. And then when you're running, we always want to run a few boards out into the deeper water to cover the fish that haven't pushed up inside. So as you look on the left-hand side, you'll see the top two are the reef runners, the deep little ripper models. Those are excellent for covering the outside edges of these shallow flats, fish that are hanging out suspended or cruising inside the brake line. And then of course the standard deep junior thunder stick and the purple prism, all around great bait. Those on the outside, those shallow Azuris and the Rapala's up on the inside, and you got a great spread to start with. You know, when you get on these fish and your pattern, you know, you get your pattern working and everything seems to be going, you can really put some fish in a boat in a hurry. And, uh, you know, that's kind of like what we're doing right now. It's been a short period of time. We got our third one on here this morning. And, uh, you know, these browns just tend to be, and they seem to be, and we're fishing this clear of water, uh, just really seem to be like a couple notches better than the other day when we're fishing out on the lake. Definitely nice action uh, out on the lake. But this inside stuff here is just totally different. We're fishing a different, it's almost like it's, uh, even though they're brown trout, they're just, you know, their home range, it's a totally different scenario, ultra clear water. And usually this water is clear throughout the whole season. It never really muddies up unless you get a huge wind coming in here. Uh, whereas at lake, you know, you get runoff in that. But uh, just some beautiful fish. And uh, here's another one, just pulling really, really hard. And we've seen the fish jump a few times. And uh, looks like it's going to be another good size one. Well, we got that board off finally, and uh, what do we got? About 45 feet here to go. That is a dandy. I'll tell you what, that's what we're really here. This is a male, you can tell by the kipe in the jaw. And uh, just a beautiful fish and just a whole nother class of what we have been catching. And look at the colors on them. Just a gorgeous looking fish. Uh, looks like a, you know, this could be a fish that uh, was in here uh, a few years ago when they let go. But uh, just a gorgeous looking brown trout. Great for this time of the year. Well, here we go again. It's been one of those days and the fish are biting. And, you know, again, we're fishing this clear, clear water. And, you know, it doesn't make rhyme or reason why things are going the way we're going. But, you know, we got cold water still. We're in the low 40s for water temps. 
and these browns are just really, really biting. And we actually just come off a flat right now. We're fishing a little bit out in deeper water. I'm gonna get this board off here. We're fishing out a little bit deeper and uh, this fish comes suspended down a little bit over deeper water. Well, one of the bonus fish, an early season king, we're gonna let this guy go and grow up. But uh, you know, that's one of the things when you're out fishing in the early spring in this cold water, you really never know what you're gonna get. And you know, salmon, uh, early, early March, it's hard to believe. So Timmy, we just finished up another great day in the water. Um, we're gonna call it the day from this morning. Um, Got out here at a reasonable time this morning. Conditions aren't perfect as we've noted before, but uh, put some nice fish in the boat. We adapted a little bit from what our plan was originally. We didn't get quite the wind they were talking for, so we had to make some adjustments, but you know, another good day. Yeah, you know, what really worked out is, uh, you know, that first pass, pass and a half, and sometimes that's what it takes. You know, you're the first boat to come through an, er uh, an area, mm -hmm. uh, and there was some boat traffic out, and you know, not only did we have a little boat, boat traffic, we didn't have enough wind, but we had a really nice pass. You know, we caught uh, you know, uh, three or four really nice fish this morning, and you know, sometimes, again, you know, that's, that's the situations that you're dealt Absolutely. with, and you, yeah. you just gotta go out and fish, and you know, when the bite stops, you know, either you go in or you find some other spot to, to go fishing, and uh, right now, we're just gonna head in, and uh, you know, we had a great day. You know, and a couple things that we did too that somebody might be able to take into their own repertoire and help them catch a few more fish is we made some bait adjustments, you know. Um, and one thing when you get conditions that are tough like this, a lot of times what we do is run a variety of baits to start the day especially because you really don't know what they're going to be on. Sometimes when the conditions are ideal and you've been there before, you can kind of pan pick your baits a little bit. But in this situation, we had to adjust and we ran a large spread of baits. We ran you know, one of the better baits today was these uh, the small Yozuris, you know, I mean, they're always a good bait, we know that. Uh, but we also ran some shad style baits, like yeah. the Deeper Juniors. Yeah, this Deep Junior, I think, actually caught the biggest fish of the day. Uh, didn't catch as many, but again, uh, you know, we're covering uh, different depths, we're covering uh, different actions of baits. And, uh, you know, sometimes on a, on a day when it's tough, that's what you have to do. And that's usually sometimes the difference between catching fish and not catching Absolutely. fish. Absolutely, and that's the key, you know, uh, conditions are a little tougher, like we said. Quiet water, flat water, the fish could be anywhere from 15 feet all the way up, up on the beach, you know, and the adjustment you have to make is to cover that entire water column. If you've got big wind and some dirty water, like we've mentioned at other times, you know the fish are probably going to be pushed up a little tighter to shore, and you can run shallow running baits in there and be a little more confident with your spread. But when you have difficult conditions, cover a wide variety of depths, give them different looks, change colors throughout the day, and you'll find something like we did today. Yeah, well, that sounds good, Mike, and that's uh, some great, uh, you know, some great advice. And uh, hey, folks, I want to thank you for joining us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again on Fish Door County Outdoor TV. See you next week. What was that, Mike? You better not have that thing in your hand. What was that? <laughs> uh, these are professional tangles. Do not try these at home. We're uh, true professionals. We're testing the durability of this line right now, and my thumbs are up. <laughs> uh, now that's a bad day. Even, <laughs> even us professionals uh, use that loosely. Uh, uh, have problems once in a while. How do I cast this? <laughs> uh, that gives it a unique action on the water. So I would say. Top water. I would say.